Hello, hello. I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to talk about a very important part of the MCAT for both the ChemPhys and BioBioChem sections. Biotech and protein analysis are very important topics to understand for the MCAT. Scientists often isolate proteins from their natural sources to study their structure, function, and properties in detail. These same scientists then end up on the MCAT as a problem. Protein isolation is a critical step in biochemistry research, and several methods are used to separate and purify proteins from complex mixtures. In this video, we will explore three common methods of protein isolation, column chromatography, ion exchange, and size occlusion, as well as affinity chromatography. Chromatography is a technique used to separate and purify molecules based on their physical and chemical properties. In protein isolation, chromatography is often used to separate proteins from complex mi mixtures based on their size, charge, or affinity. Column chromatography is a type of chromatography that uses a stationary phase, shown here in orange, and a mobile phase, shown here in a reddish color. In this graph, we can see a representation of a column lined with a polar stationary phase, shown here in orange, which is designed to separate proteins based on their polarity. The sample mixture is loaded into the column, in this case, I'm saying water is our sample, and the mobile phase, in this case, a nonpolar solvent like hexane, is passed through the column. So both the hexane and our sample water are being added at the same time, and both are going to start moving through the column. The polar proteins, or molecules, in the mixture interact with the stationary phase more than the nonpolar proteins. This will result in nonpolar proteins coming out first because they're not interacting, compared to the polar proteins, which will come out later because they're having more interactions with the wall, therefore kind of falling more slowly. Next up, we have ion exchange chromatography. This is another type of chromatography used in protein isolation. In this type of chromatography, the stationary phase material has a charged surface, which attracts proteins with the opposite charge. Proteins with a high net positive charge will be more strongly attracted to negatively charged stationary phase material, while proteins with a high net negative charge will be more weakly attracted and will elute more quickly. Now, there are two types of ion exchange chromatography you need to know for the MCAT. We've got cation and anion exchange. They're named for the type of ion that they are binding first. So in cation exchange chromatography, which I have on the left, we are going to have something negatively bound to the walls. These are covalently there. These are not moving. We've got our sulfate things forever, which are going to be sitting there attracting cations. Cations, in this case NH3, will be attracted to this and become stuck to the resin. There it can sit for days, months, weeks, whatever, until we want to get rid of them. To get rid of them, we need what is called an elutant. In this case, it's sodium. Anything positive that can displace, it will bind to that negatively charged thing, kick off whatever protein we're interested in, kick off the cation we're interested in. This is the cation exchange. So remember, cation exchange, cation is sticking to it, the cation is leaving. We're exchanging cations. That's what we care about. On the other hand, we have anion exchange. This is where we're interested in collecting anions. So we have something positively charged stuck to the wall, in this case, DEAE, which is positively charged. This will attract negatively charged proteins, which will get stuck to it. And when we want these proteins to leave, we can add something with negative charges, maybe like chlorine, to come down and displace those proteins. Next up, we have size exclusion chromatography. This is the third type of chromatography commonly used in protein isolation. In this type of chromatography, the stationary phase material contains porous beads that are designed to allow small molecules to enter the pores, shown here in orange, while larger molecules in blue are excluded and therefore elute more quickly. This makes size exclusion chromatography ideal for separating proteins based on their size, with smaller proteins eluting more slowly and larger proteins eluting more quickly. Finally, we have affinity chromatography. As our fourth and final type of chromatography commercially used commonly used in protein isolation. In this type of chromatography, the stationary phase material contains a ligand or antibody that is specifically designed to bind the protein of interest. This allows for the most selective separation and purification of the protein, as other proteins in the mixture that do not bind the ligand will be washed through the column. 
Understanding these protein purification and separation techniques are key to doing well on the chemphys and biobiochem sections of the MCAT. Column chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, size occlusion chromatography, and affinity chromatography are all commonly used techniques in protein isolation on the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on chromatography protein separation techniques, and I will see you next time.